Okay, fellas, uh, another chapter in getting this gray ghost working. Um, I ordered a used coil, ignition coil for this thing. Test it out okay, and also um, I tested the one in the ski, and it's okay too. That's a static test, though. Uh, these things normally don't go out. I know that, and I am not one to use a parts cannon to fix this stuff, but I just want to rule it out, and so we're going to do that. But if anything, if you're interested, uh, we are going to replace the coil. You can see how that's done. We're going to check the spark quality. You can see how that's done. We're also going to check the charging system to see if we're getting uh, more than 12 volts, you know, out of the charging system to charge that battery. So it's worth watching anyway. Um, but uh, hopefully with any luck, maybe we'll find something, maybe we won't, but uh, let's get to it. Engine on, water on, water off, engine off. You don't want to get those things backwards. In fact, now you got me paranoid. I want to go make sure this thing really is turned off. So what we saw was we're getting about 13.5 on our voltmeter there. So I think that that's probably okay. Others may have an opinion about that. And I'm grounding through the engine, too, not directly to the battery. But it is, it is charging because it's not 12.5. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to put this inline tester in there and see what the spark looks like. tested both of those and you saw what it looked like um looks like it's getting okay spark to me um i've never actually used one of those inline testers before <clears throat> so i don't know if that's what it normally looks like on any vehicle you could see it was jumping around a little bit in there but it looked like it was pretty good healthy bright firing so i think that that part's okay Next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to take this electrical box out. It comes out pretty easy. And we're going to replace the, or actually we're going to test the electrical coil first. But we're going to go ahead and replace it since we have one. Won't hurt. Easy to do. Not, you know, assuming that this is going to fix the problem. But it's just part of the troubleshooting. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll, this thing will fail its own test. We could do it in line here, um, you know. You have to take these boots off, though, because these, these boots actually have resistance in them. So in order to get to the core there and do a proper test, you have to pull the wires out of the boots. Um, which, you know, I may actually do that first just to see, just to see what's there. I went ahead and took the boots off and uh, checked it. It's not on right now. Well, it is, but um, it was measuring about 13... 13 and a half thousand ohms whereas the other one was reading 12 and a half so there is a difference but 13 and a half is actually within spec which means the coil is probably probably okay but this is just a static test not a dynamic test so I'm going to go ahead and replace it and 
see if that makes any difference at all. Okay, we're going to uh, take this coil out. Um, I left it hooked up to the uh, starter. I forgot that that was down there, and so um, there's no need to take the whole thing all the way out. Just disconnected it enough from the battery where we can work on it. Here's the new coil. Uh, you want to have a little bit of this on hand, dielectric grease. You do not want to put that on the connections where they connect. You want to put it on after you put them because this actually prevents electricity. That's its purpose. Um, we're just using that to anti-corrode and keep anything from arcing or anything like that. But we'll put that on last, not as part of the connection. So uh, we're going to start by taking our good old 10 millimeter and uh, loosening these guys up. Make sure you note that you had a white wire on the top and the other one on the bottom and then the three grounds there. Take pictures of this stuff so that if you get lost, you can go back and refer to it. And then um, that's not good. I got a wasp on my foot. Anyway, uh, Take a pair of channel locks and just gently get these things loose. You know, you don't have to do much more than that. And then they should be able to come, you know, right off with your fingers. You don't need to crank these things down to the point where you crack them. Once you get those off, these little white things come out. So you got to kind of pop them out that way. That's what actually seals it. Put silicone on those things like I was talking about, make this real slick, and then when you push the seal up on it, it ought to just slip right off, just like that. So if you don't do that, you're going to be pulling and stretching on that thing. You don't want to do that. Make it easy for yourself. And it's just sliding this out. And uh, I'm going to compare it down here. Looks like the new one's longer, which is good because normally what happens is you take the old ones and you a uh, common thing to do is to trim the ends, which I did on this one by like a half an inch. Um, but anyway, uh, the new ones is uh, longer, which is good. Got the new coil in and uh, we're just going to tighten these things down. Remember... No dielectric grease or anything on these. Um, this one doesn't matter so much as holding it, but this one does. You know, that's just basically all this is doing is joining, you know, all three of those things together. Um, and then we got our things here that we're going to put our collars back on, the seal collars. And again, I'm going to silicone this really good. I don't want to get silicone or anything inside here because those are contact points. Up Okay, got these on here, and one thing you want to do is when you're putting these on, you know, like I said, slick these things down with silicone and make this easier to slip this rubber seal collar on, but you also want to, you want the that white collar to be off just a little bit and then put the cap on because you see that little white ring around there, you want that to all, come all the way through there, you don't want it to be pinched. So you don't want to force that white collar in there and then put the cap on. You want to have it offset by, you know, an eighth of an inch or so. Make sure you get it, you know, all the way through and then tighten it down snug tight with your fingers. You do not need to over tighten these. It's just a rubber seal. Um, these are all tightened down now. Um, again, I took a little bit of dielectric grease after I tightened it down. And if I didn't mention it before, all these connections here, um, th this is already something I've gone through. So I, I had already polished all of these connections up before. But if you have not done that, make sure you take all of these off and polish them up with a wire brush or some 400 grit sandpaper. Clean them up really good. Put it all back together. Tighten it down and then put your dielectric grease on it and put it on any of these little posts down here. Anywhere where there might be some corrosion, you know, that's all good. Um, around the outside seals on these things, 
you know, just keep it away from the actual electrical contacts as best you can. So last thing we got to do is uh, screw these boots on. Okay, all done. Um, got our caps on. And remember, you want to push these down in there and you want to force them in there and screw them in. You know, you want to twist them in. They should go a good three or four turns and you'll feel it tighten up. Um, they're not just pins. You don't just push them in. You got to screw them in there. Um, and then put zip ties. Those are really just to kind of hold them in place. Uh, you really don't probably don't even need those. I just do it. And then after you do that, um, hit it with a little bit of silicone just to add a little bit more to that outside um, insulator there. And uh, that is it. So we're done replacing this coil. Uh, we're going to put it all back in place and fire it up. Going to put the key on and see if we can give her a tickle and see if she'll start up. Um, I don't like running these skis out of the water very long with this. It heats up that carbon seal down here. I can actually grab it with my hand, and when you run it too long, a little warm, but at least it runs, so we didn't break anything. So we're going to uh, take her to the ramp, put her in the water, and see if we wasted our time, or maybe if we're lucky, maybe we fixed it. Um, anyway, um, thanks for watching this. At least you know what it's like to change a coil on it, what you have to go through. So I hope this helps if you're going to do that. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, guys.